I was tricked by my torch. Welcome to Straight Six Fan. I'm Grant Tommy, helping you build your hot rod in your confidence without a ton of money. And today, well, we're going to pick up where we left off on Wednesday's upload. Ironically, it is Wednesday as I record this right now, so hopefully you caught that episode. Um, if not, um, I will leave an info card. You know what? I'll put it at the, uh, the end screen is what I'll do. But, um, yeah, as you recall, I, I was struggling to get that inside. I called it the crotch um, <laughs> of the white pipe welded. Something was going wrong with my TIG machine. Um, I kept, the, the arc was just super violent and I kept um, discoloring my tungsten and I just could not figure out what was going on. And I was down to my last two electrodes and it took me the better part of, well actually, from Saturday all the way up until now Wednesday to figure out what actually was causing that. So there I was Saturday, down to my last two electrodes, and I started to uh, sharpen both ends. So, you know, when I would dole one in, I would just pull it out the electrode, flip it around, and have another sharpened in. Well, at some point in the process of doing that, that's what screwed me up. And I'll explain this later, but um, it's just been a little bit of a journey, and, um, you know, so first off, let me just kind of show you what was happening. As you can see, the arc was just super bright and violent and it wouldn't control itself. And um, I even went as far as to call Everlast Welder's tech line and they suspected maybe I had um, just an improper ground. So, um, you know, I didn't think my ground looked that bad. Um, the machine's only three years old and, and I'm a hobbyist, so I don't, I don't use it aggressively. But nonetheless, I cleaned it up. I even flipped around the, uh, we'll call it the U-shape of the clamp on both sides um, because there were a little bit of divots on the end that um, you know was primarily making most of the contact. This would sort of be the beginning for me to just start doing a bunch of well what's probably routine maintenance things I should probably be thinking about doing on a regular basis to my welder. So the ground clamp didn't fix the problem we were still just throwing a violent uh, violent arc in, in, in that the tungsten, it wouldn't burn up, but it would just discolor. And all these things, and then I would get a brown ring around the, the very porous welds. You know, it just reminded me of like, you know, what happens when I run out of gas. So, um, the more and more I thought about it, um, and read through the troubleshooting matrix in my owner's manual, everything pointed towards some sort of a gas problem. So after I took the cover off and checked it for dust and, and blew it out, it really was, well, quite immaculate, I thought. Um, again, they just kept pointing towards it was probably a gas delivery problem. Well, the problem was I had plenty of pressure at the tank. I could definitely hear gas coming out of the nozzle when I would engage the pedal and even in the post flow. So I knew I had gas. I was pretty sure my solenoid was working because of that. So then I thought, well, maybe I've got contaminated gas or maybe I've got a leak somewhere in the line and I'm just picking up um, atmosphere air. So I then took the denim cover off of the, the torch, um, torch cords, the gas line, the thumb trigger igniter and the, uh, the torch power cable inspected it visually for any sort of uh, leaks, you know, tears in the line or whatever, did not see any. So I'm just baffled. And again, like I said, this took me, didn't figure it out Sunday, didn't figure it out Monday, didn't figure it out Tuesday. It took me till Wednesday, that many days to, to kind of cross each of these off. I'm, what was it, Tuesday, I went and bought a brand new bottle of Argon thinking that even though I didn't think I had contaminated gas, I was like, well, you can never have too much gas on hand. So. Um, went and did that and um, sure enough you know I switched out bottles and again same problems. This is the anatomy of a TIG torch. So of course you have your tungsten rod, you have your gas lens, you have your what's called a collet holder which holds then of course your collet, the torch itself and then I'm not really sure what you call this but it just is to protect the extra length of rod that you know shoots through your torch. So. Anyway, as you recall, 
I said I was down to my last two electrodes on Saturday, and because I was sharpening both ends, at some point in time what had happened is I contaminated one end, so, you know, it was kind of balled up. And um, so I flipped the electrode around, shoved it in, you know, the assembly. Um, and through that process, what happened was, I'm guessing anyway, if the collet was like so, when I pulled the electrode out, it came out with it. And so when I put it back in, I actually put the collet in backwards. So you see how it's shaped with a collar. And then on this end, you know, it's it's got uh, grooves cut in it so it can like pinch, pinch around the rod and hold it, you know, to that, whatever you set the, the stick out of your electrode. Well, it's supposed to go in like this to the collet holder. And when you get that up close, you can see, of course, we got holes in the collet holder for gas to escape. What was happening was, because I had it in backwards, this was blocking, well, this is a bad example because this is a new set. Let me grab my old, old one. So this is my OG collet holder and collet. Obviously, when I was flipping out trying to find solutions, I bought all new <laughs> internals. And you know what? I mean, could I still use this for some time? Sure, probably, but... You know, for as many hours that it's on this, I don't feel bad uh, <laughs> buying new. It's probably it's probably time to change this out. But um, same principle, gas holes right here, and um, that almost sounded bad. And then with it and backwards, we were just plugging up um, an escape route for the gas. So that was my problem all along. It may have been obvious to some of you guys watching um, up until this point, but. If you're new to TIG welding like I am, just figured I would uh, run through my experience. Maybe this helps somebody out in the future. Um, don't be like me um, and why I didn't double check that sooner than I did. Um, I don't know. Good news is I can get back to welding up the Y pipe, get this sucker completed, get it up under Project Low Fairmont, and put us in position to do a first startup, hopefully this weekend. Work's also kind of slowing down right now, so I might be able to sneak out, uh, grab an extra, you know, not quite a half day, um, as I get close to a deadline here at work, but, uh, we'll see. Uh, feeling pretty good about it. Hope, like I said, I hope this helps somebody out, um, in the future. Um, if it did, why don't you just give me a like on the video, that really helps out, or a comment, um, that as well. YouTube recognizes that as um, it's a helpful video, and so they'll push it to more people looking for this answer. Otherwise, um, subscribe or share the episode. I don't care which one you do, they all help. But that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, if you want to see some other videos, I guess, actually, on my Everlast 206PI, well, over here, I'll drop a, a video or two. That's going to do it for this episode. Till next time, peace out. My, oh, my, in fact, it reminded me of in, in the, the, um,